How many times in the silence of the night might you hear a whistle? Would it give you fright? What would the source be? An owl in a tree. A signal from afar intended for me. What comes from the woods? Is it real? Is it man-made? Is it a thrill? What comes from the woods? Could you tell me? Still, most people have no clue. If you could, would you?
where do they hide in the shadows, in the woods? The things that you fear, the things that you should. Are they dark? Do they have teeth? Are they poisonous beneath the dirt hiding in the grass? Are they the snakes or the spiders in the webs that you cross with your face and wonder where, where, where did they go? The spiders, you know. Do you feel them? Bah, then they must not be there for now. Run. And the camera in the dark. Why, you can, but who would? When you can only reach and feel as in the dark woods of the black forest. There you have to crawl for fear of hitting your face on a branch in the darkness of night. What's out there? Is that human? Is that nature? Does it make a difference? Where do I find water? In the dark. Wish I'd have brought water. How? How did I end up out here? Where? Where is here? Wait a minute. Where was I when I blacked out? For this is certainly blackness. Wait. Hello? Hello? That's so strange. How can there be so, so many birds talking at night? That's not normally thought. And why so sporadically? He listened. Not even a frog. What? Where'd they go? And why is it that a nursery rhyme sticks with us through time? Why is it when you learn these words, the rhyme, that they can stay with you through all time until you're old? Not get cold in the ground, and you will still be found 
whistling those jingles and singing those tunes embedded in you the runes of the past in words strange words Why would that stick in a person's mind through time? Is it the food? Is it the tune, the jingle? Spell, Oscar Meyer. What is that difference in memory that you see between different people? Perhaps like you and me. Did the banker have a monocle in your game of Monopoly? What do you see in your memory? Perhaps that is what separates you, the digital thinker, from me, M-I-I. Using all of my eyes, the two in my head that face outward at the world, the one inside my head, the third eye seeing into my spiritual center and into the universe, the Wubtron that is part of me, M, I, the identities, I, identities, yes. We are many eyes in a lifetime as children, as parents, as teachers, as lovers, we have many eyes that few others see with their eyes. Secrets, passions, touch, so much. What do you do with your touch? Who do you tell? And how much, so many secrets when it comes to touch. Mm. But when you get it, ah, oxytocin flowing through the veins, energy eases pains, solitude no longer when you touch so much changes. Why do we make it so hard to touch? Why do we have to be so cold so much? Truly, truly, everyone should learn to touch. Not so much just to touch, but to communicate how much we care, how much we want to be there for someone to ease their pain. Solitude, loneliness can lead to depression, and that is pain. Poor nutrition, a lack of exercise, a lack of motivation, that's pain. And what can you do? Be the example, show through how you live each day that there is a way for those 
who once, like you, burdened by the past, by hindsight, a horrible, horrible burden. If you pay attention to it, it will keep you from going forward. For you can't go forward quickly with your head pointed, eyes pointed out the back window of your life. That's hindsight. It's 2020, but good for what? Learn your lesson and then turn around in the seat that you're driving inside of the human body. You, inside of that body, turn around from the past and leave the hindsight to lessons learned in the rearview mirror. Don't dole on them. You're not a victim. You're going forward the opposite direction. Why pay attention to the one you've been in when you're going to get better and better and better? every day because of that the lessons you learned not because you're living in the past and last free yourself from that burden you can run faster down the road without all the rocks in your backpack just keep notes i learned a lesson from this throw the rock out i learned a lesson from that go back in time throw the rock out once you empty the pack behind you of old memories of guilts secrets of who you touched of who touched you it matters not for what you do in the moment is what determines which direction you are facing hindsight foresight or stuck in the moment of distraction what is distraction to you is it your habits your sports, your TV, soap operas? Is it a habit of drinking or drugging or sex just for the adrenaline rush, for the climax, for the attention, for the feeling of somebody else that maybe cares when actually they too are just trying to get that feeling out of touching without loving, opening the heart, with the right people, you can do that. With people you can't trust, all you can do is get carnal satisfaction, get your rocks off, as they say. It's not enough. Not to mention, it's dangerous. It could get you killed. There are too many diseases, too many ways that people can go crazy over casual sex. So please, don't mistake wobbling communicating love through touch for casual sex. In spite of all the things that you might see that Darby had to go through to learn that lesson, that was the lesson he learned to learn from what he experiences as he's used for all those delights in the attempt to try to find out what humans, yes, what humans, Darby's purpose for coming back, for reincarnation, how do you communicate with humans as all these other kids that are geniuses coming back into their shells with their memory, their job, their purpose? Why are you here? For many, it takes a lifetime to figure it out until you reach your peak at 66 when you finally have wired all the parts of the brain. You've worked your way through your chakras and cleared from your root chakra all the way up to be able to find at last a spiritual meaning in your life and a way to communicate that in your 60s, believe it or not, kids. It takes a little while, but it's worth it. And it lasts. If you watch the masters at 100 years old and 110 years old, it lasts. And yes, while they might get wrinkly over time, trust, there are stories in those wrinkles. There are stories in those lines, life stories. What are you doing to fill your life with great stories? Living life fully, savoring it or risking it at every curve for the adrenaline rush. There's so many ways to live life as Darby kept living over and again. Which way is the right way? Who do you touch? How do you touch? How much do you touch? After you touch, what's your obligation? How much? Are you married for life because you touched this or that or this way or that way? 
if she gets pregnant and they're not in love, should they get married? Should they raise a child? No, they should not abort it. Stop. Not a question. There are mothers and fathers waiting. If you let it be known and you're healthy, please allow someone to assist you in having a child and bringing it into this world. These are geniuses being born, spirits from places far away coming here, reincarnating, some for the first time, to share with us incredible, incredible knowledge. Born into the bodies, the vessels, honored, given and entrusted with the powers, they are the leaders of the future that will help us eliminate what most perceive as the struggles in life, the hardships, the illness. Energy does not have to cost everybody, but first we have to learn how to live simpler so we don't just use the energy the wrong way. So, as we enter the new millennia, leaving Pisces and so much that has done us so good and carrying forward the best of it, salvaging from the last couple of centuries and going into Aquarius. As water bearers, we bear water and clay inside of a gelatinous shell, a skin, inside of there in harmony, in an orchestra, many bacteria, viruses, microbes, sharing a common thread, a common Wubtron, Wub, energy of soul manifesting. And through this instrument, this incredible bio computer we call a body, a vessel, an avatar, our spirit is able to communicate, grow. And if nurtured properly, at speeds unimaginable for intelligence and ability because they come with their memory from their last lives. And this time there are no movements by organized, institutionalized religion to hang them, burn them at the stake, to drown, to call anyone who believes differently than that time the Catholic Church or the Franciscans and thus they were taken away and killed or killed in their own homes their own towns the Essenes the Gnostics the Cathars all dying within a hundred years of Jesus as the Roman Catholic Church Rome being Caesar and the Catholic Church between them owning all the people and anyone who did not agree well let's just say you might not see them again as we enter a new period we don't want that to happen but some places it is so darby as he left kept open a channel a path to communicate a means through the ether where time virtually stops. It only continues when you step into the physical world. And then, where do you step in? Time travel, is it physical or is it spiritual? And if it's spiritual, as is astral travel in an ether world, why can you not go up and pick up in your body in another time? Why can you not go back in time in your own body, look and listen with your older rational mind, clean it up, throw out the trash in the background, and then come back into the driver's seat after you took your little break, have some incredible foresight to look into the future, not look out the side windows as you turn on the car, and that being your body, your mind, your spirit, your eyes, the two in front of you, your ears, pointing them forward. And that way, when you accelerate, yes, when you pick up energy, you breathe, you clear your throat, 
Breathe in through your nose. Prepare to speak from the heart. Use your instincts. Use your eyes. Use your brain. And see. See the truth. Honor that which is true, obviously, to you from the heart, not from the wallet. From the heart, not from the groin, where sexual urges override logic. Even the heart. Focus your energy up, up from the root, up through your appetites, your foods, your drink. Push that energy up through to your focus. Gain, gain by foresight, focus in front of you. As you do this, as you gather energy and the heart gets engaged, love, not just perhaps for your parents, if you ever had it from them, for them or others, was it good? Did you come volunteer into this planet with an incredible future that required perhaps an incredible beginning. What is that beginning? Darby, he asked for it. He said, Jesus, I'm ready to go. But I don't want that human drama. I just want to go in there and do my job. Laughing together with the others. The team's all ready to go to incarnate. Spend a lifetime in the holographic earth. God creates with his thoughts and lets us play in plan and then dip into mortality into the body incarnate wub energy of spirit called by name many names on different planets and languages prana chi source love it is an energy a purity but Never forget, all energy can be misdirected, abused, and of course, then you can lose. What do you lose? Perhaps your connection to the source, to the wub, to the prana, to the chi, to the earth. You come from the earth, clay, water, and you'll return to the earth. You fuel yourself from the earth, whether you understand it or not, whether it be the food, the water, or the energy that pours out of the tree leaves, the sunshine that gets through the atmosphere, and literally the ions out of the earth and the air. You are a composition of materials orchestrated with a Wubtron, a spirit, a soul, Wub. If you could put a, a fine definition of light, a lightning ball concentrated inside of a vessel of water and clay with a skin, a membrane, a fascia of electrical frequencies, magnetic frequencies, an incredible machine that creates its own cures through its urine, what it breathes through its nose. It has the ability to do so many things to regenerate, to create. And in doing so with a heart, to feel empathy, telepathy. And through these many ways of communicating, it is indeed one of the most supreme of all forms of life, but it can be abused like anything and you lose 
the connection to the source. Ah, but how? Well, you will use your communication skills. Communication between you and other humans and sentient beings. You put a mask to hide the expressions of the lips, the cheeks, the teeth, to dull the tongue, to limit the oxygen, to allow the worst of bacteria to form and force people to breathe through their mouth and lose their immune systems. So many ways to hide how we communicate. I can communicate with a smile from a third of a mile. With a good camera, you can see my mood, you would think, by what you see. That's what a model does. He or she stands before you and they say, look happy, and they put an expression on their face, and their teeth show, and their lips shape. And they say, look sad, look stern, and look mad. Each of these a look passionate, sexy, soft. And if you're a good model, an actor, if you're a human being who knows how to manipulate your face, your voice, your touch, why, you just might be a dangerous human being. For if you abuse that power, if you become instead of a virtuous person who tries to give service and help others, not to ease their pain for your ego or money or all the other things you might get as a reward for doing good things for using your energy of spirit, of soul, your energy of wub, as a wubber. Yes, wub, incarnate. You are a wub, a wubber. And in that form, you can communicate through wobbling, touching, wobbling in a way to communicate this energy of soul. That's wobbling, not sex. That's wobbling your energy, your spirit, through your touch to another spirit or being. You can wibble with your mind from one vessel the, the Wubtron occupies, the spirit. Perhaps trapped in a hospital, dying in a bed, wanting to get hold of your children. And you can do it, literally, as if, from in your head. Telepathy. How often when you're waiting for that phone call from somebody, they hear you and call. Or if somebody's hurt, suddenly you hear, as a mother, re re recall, oh my goodness. Out of the clear blue, oh, I have a child in trouble. What's going on? Why? And you start searching. Why? Because you have a link telepathic. It, your dog has, your cat has with you. When you leave work, your dog goes to the door knowing you're coming home well in advance of it. How does that happen? The fact is the future was planned so well that when we, all of the eyes that came together to help realize that means form reality with all of the eyes working together with a common, unified goal. How is that possible? It is the oneness of human consciousness in a world that has a way to express the concept, to understand it, to visualize it, to be able to thus like anything, learn how to turn the key on. These are keys to turn on all the powers of the human and other sentient beings. But for humans, being welcomed into the intercosmic web society, it is our chance to prove we, too, can coexist peacefully with other creatures, other sentient beings, instead of slaughtering them all in our egomaniac perspective. That we, human beings, those few that are left with that sadly megalomaniac perspective, 
that they own the world, the planet. Nobody, no entity in a body owns a planet. That said, there are many entities that are not in bodies. Yes, spiritual entities, powerful, battling, just like physical entities, for territory, spiritual, and physical. There are two battles going on, one in the physical world, one in your head. No matter how bad those battles are in the physical world, the final battles will be in your head. Prepare. Get your head on straight. Start breathing correctly. Get your vessel in good condition so that your head can operate well, your heart can operate well, your gut can operate well, and together, unified, you are a powerful being with the ability to shoot photons out of your eyes. Photons so powerful that somebody blocks away will know when you look at them and want to communicate. And they'll spin around and went, who's looking at me? That, my friend, is your DHA beneath your DNA, underlying your RNA, communicating with your spirit through the ether and through the energy of light hitting your eyeballs. DHA, converting light with all of the knowledge that light has in it into you every minute. What does that mean? If you punch a tiny hole in a piece of paper and you shine a slide, a picture upon that piece of paper and only through that tiny hole does a small speck of light carry through and then is cast upon another surface for light has no apparent power unless it has something to reflect upon. True. So as it hits that next piece of paper, that tiny ray of light, would you believe? Reversed, upside down perhaps, is the entire image that was cast upon the larger piece of paper, yet only a tiny, tiny piece of light got through. Even that light still had all of the information sent through a piece of film in front of the bulb and through magnifying glasses so that it would hit upon a piece of paper. Water, likewise, carries a memory. If you want to think about it, you are 70% water. A river flowing through you as you drink water and pass it through sweat or pee until, guess what? More water, like a river, flowing into you, creating you, exiting you. Does it hold your memory? Of course it does. Does it hold you, DNA? Absolutely. It holds a record of all the diseases you have in your blood, perhaps, or in your body. It will tell you all sorts of things. And in fact, it is sterile to you. And you can use it because it has antimicrobial agents, antibacterial agents, antifungal agents. It will cure your dandruff. It will cure your athlete's foot. It will cure, you can just take care of ear infections, eye infections, sinus infections. And if you happen to have an open wound that's all dirty and you have no clean water, you use your own pee and rinse it out and wash it out and you will then avoid infections and possibly death. Yes, the miracle water of life coming out of your body that God created has the ability to cure you in so many ways as it has for centuries and centuries. Now, you can destroy that. Spike proteins and things you stick in, jabs you make that destroy the original plan. 
So what do you do? Stay natural if you can. But more importantly, we need to raise a generation as naturally as possible, strong, powerful. We now have ways to cure, to prevent disease, to fix things through many methods we've not been able to use because the government stopped it. Rife, R-I-F-E, Royal Rife, the maker of frequency generating devices that would cure illness. You have many, uh, many, many, many people that were geniuses. Dr. Reich. There's, there's one of many that went to prison trying to tell us this could be done. THC in the Holy Sacrament to 1250 taken out to weaken, to take away the visions and leave people with alcohol only, like magnetism and, sadly, electricity, alcohol, and marijuana, the yin and the yang. With alcohol, you can make somebody so angry, so mad, so hateful, so inflamed, so, yes, able to go to war for your religion, for your God that wants peace because the other God, according to your leaders, is a bad God. How many people have died? How many countries over the leaders somehow having a special communique with God that costs the minions everything yet leaves the leaders somehow Amazingly well off. How does that happen? Without a plan or with a plan? Today, we spend most of this first portion of this hour talking about what could happen, what might have happened, what would happen, but what could happen is humanity and the other beings on the planet could unite and say, we're all right. Let's do without these evil leaders. Let's do without the killing, the war machines. If you want to talk stopping global warming, stop war. If you don't think a bomb, a missile, bullets, all the things that burn, if you don't think that adds to global warming, Turn your car off. Eat the keys. Plug your electric car into your butt. You are stupid beyond measure. War. The fuel to run tanks. The fuel to fly airplanes. The bombs going off, creating enormous amounts of heat, death, destruction, taking away food. That is the threat. Global warming is caused by war, the preparation for war, all the tanks going to the line, that by far and away, compared to the 4th of July even around the world, or the New Year's, or every night at Disney World, blowing off stupid fireworks to be able to go ahead and say, look at the pretty colors and all the heavy metals falling on nature all around. Oh, yeah, and people too. Does anybody care? No, they stand underneath the stupid fireworks in awe with their mouths open, sucking it all in and wondering why they have sores on their bodies and get sick and their children too. How is it people can be so stupid? What drives them from ignorance through the potential and the chance to learn into absolute stupidity. The refusal to take what you learned and apply it to the real world. To realize, that means take reality and I, mix them together and create the future out of today by taking the facts and doing it the right way. Sadly, somehow, and I watched this develop when the first cyber cafes came out, through this magical, mystical internet, through all of these other tools of social platforms that allow us to shape, manipulate, shock, awe, and keep in fear the masses who 
while deer are also not as smart as that deer that runs out on the highway with the lights in his eyes and jolts inevitably in the wrong direction to be smeared on the highway. Ah, if only it were just deer, but it's the herds of sheep will running for the cliffs, following inevitably shepherds at the lead, paid to seed the minds of the sheeple into believing that the tail in front of them will lead them to happiness, salvation, and a rap for sure. But it's going to be a bad rap, probably for a lot of people, because the shepherd never works for the sheep. Why does nobody ever say that? The shepherd works for the slaughterhouse. He works for the owner of the sheep. The shepherd never works for the sheep in spite of the fact that he protects them. He lives with them. He may love them, but that's because he gets paid to deliver them to their maker. So, as you live your life, know you, as a sheeple, are meant to be sheared, taxed, in other words. You're meant to be herded by limiting your knowledge of where you are and fencing you in. Fences are sensors. Sensors are basically redirection. Every time you get near it, you're directed back in. But they're almost invisible. No, they're wires. Telegram, telegraph, electrical wires. There are wires around the fence. But you won't know it until you get out. What does that mean? Hey, jelly beans. How many of you sleep with your head against the wall? How many of you don't know there's an electrical field coming out from the wall where they see electricity, alternating current that goes 60 above and 60 below zero? And if your head is in the field 16 inches from the wall, it will fry your brain in such a way as to make your pineal gland think that there's daylight inside as a baby or a child. And in doing so, get the serotonin going. And serotonin is supposed to be not going at night so you can sleep deep, get your REM sleep and not have an attention deficit issue the next day, not be tired, not be depressed because you flushed out your brain. Your lymphatic fluids have been pushed out of there. And because there's been no electricity or light around your brain at night, if you're headed and laying toward the east, it's best. But with all of this just right, grounded during the day, breathing properly through your nose at night, if you do all those things right, guess what? Even hang your bed from the ceiling on ropes so that you float again at night. When the sun goes down, your lights go out, you get some sleep, and some healing comes out. Melatonin drops the inflammation in your brain, out of your pineal gland, your pituitary gland, your adrenal glands. All these glands work together in a symphony if you are careful and treat your vessel right. So I say to you, I say to me, I say to all of us who want to see, be the example, show through sight what the light, you, coming from you, looks like. Don't be distracted. Don't get off your middle path. Don't go down the side thinking there's a light over here and run off to the side and fall off. Don't go off to the side that's being too much in the present moment. We start looking out the side windows and you start chasing and turn the car, turn the vessel to the side to chase the light. You will fall off the highway, go into the ditch. That light on the side is all the beings, all the houses, all the distractions, all the, the drugs, all the, the alcohol, all the things that you can do from having a sex addiction to having a collection addiction to having a depression is that stop looking out the side window, stop looking out the back window, start looking out the future window, forethought. So, never believe you can't. Why? Because others have proved they could, whom everyone else thought they could not. So if you believe you can't, that's your own belief and your limitation is your belief system, not your ability. If you believe you can do more 
that anyone else believes you can achieve. Why is that important? If you depend on others who refuse to do the work, who refuse to believe in you, and who refuse, if possible, to help you leave them behind by showing they are failures. Don't depend on them to support you. Don't depend on your fellow addicts to support you in quitting or you will, of course, be leaving their group. People stay together because of common beliefs, unity. If your unity is meth, if your unity is cocaine, if your unity is alcohol and you meet at the bar and all your friends do this or sports and you go to the big Super Bowl and your friends go out and get a blowjob from some young girl who happens to be there at the largest actual sex trafficking event in the planet. Yes, the United States Super Bowl, where everybody knows and actually moves in all of the trafficked human beings a month in advance of the events. It is horrific. And it continues because there are too many participants who drop their pants for stupid reasons. And anyone who traffics human beings for those reasons deserves to vacate the planet, vacate their vessel. You have no right to take the life of another human being as a child, defenseless, as an elder, defenseless, any sentient being, you come beat my dog, I will beat you immediately. Why? My dog is a sentient being. We communicate. We have telepathy. We touch. I stroke my dog's back. I scratch my dog. He loves me. I love my dog. Most likely more than I love you. And others do too. Their pets are their unconditional loving friends, whales, they sing songs. And yet we have sonar that destroys their ears, that blows them up. We test bombs that destroy huge chunks of nature, whether it be the forest or otherwise, just to test to see how destructive we can be. The military machines that want war. You cannot sell inventory unless you have war. What do you think you do to create a demand for sales? You generate fear. Ask the Rothschilds. Ask the Templars. Ask the Masons. Ask the U.S. military machine, the Israeli military machines, everybody that sells all the military equipment and creates all the heat testing it and blowing up all the ammo and blowing up the missiles and blowing up the bombs and running all the tanks and running all the planes and running all the jets and running all the drones. And guess what? It ain't your SUV. It is not you. It is not me because I'm not in that war. It's the military. Anybody anywhere on the planet that does not understand the militaries of the world burn more fuel than anyone if you want to stop global warming stop the elite who own the war machine from creating war ergo more heat yes ergo more heat so how do you stop global warning stop warring global warring stops global warming just add the m the M in me, M I I, all the eyes of the world, me, M I I, is for a victory. Wibbly, wub, a virus, a word, a wub. Wub is the energy soul expressed in body form, is a wib, wub in body. Wub and body, wibs can wibble, control their mind, and be able to communicate with other sentient beings. They can wobble using the energy spirit to combine with touch to communicate with other beings. Webble, get on there, on the internet, on the web, and communicate around the world and carry this virus to all human beings so that they can communicate with you and me. They can wibbleize, wibbleize, yes, to realize through imagination, 
to fantasize and then materialize solutions. So as I come up to what normally would be calibrated as one full hour of your valuable time, I must thank you, thank you, thank you. For those of you who listened, this is for you. As an indigo, I came long ago in the 50s when they were sewing this together, when it was clear what they had in mind. Many of us, the Light Brigade, indigo, colors that hide well in the crowd, on the edges, soon, soon. Yes, things must happen. Changes will come. And as it looks the darkest, the lights, yes, the Light Brigade, we, all of us, hiding in the midst of it all, shall rise. And there's nothing with wibbly the entire world can rise in unison. We, all the eyes, with transparency, the internet, the cameras, effectively a billion spies. And guess what? The lies, they won't survive transparency. So, soon, my friends, globally, we, all the eyes, in WUB, a world union of beings, hidden amongst everybody, with some silly songs, some poetry, an earthworm, with wire frame glasses, and a blue hat, who brings a message called Wibblery. Yes, my friends, WUBtrons, all of us who came a trust, a bond, not wedlock. No, wub, energy soul, locked together. We, all the eyes, are the Light Brigade. Join me, my friends, in the story of Darby, a fantasy. Of course, why bother censoring a fantasy? And we, all the wubbers of the world, can gather, grow, spread the virus of Wibbery, a language from Darby, who came to Earth to be, hopefully, a guide, a messenger. And with poetry, with cartoons, with jingles and songs, we can right the wrongs of a millennium of abuse, not the use of the great words of those who came before us, Jesus, and many more, Muhammad, Buddha. You pick the names, no matter what. Wub, thank you, thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.